Georg, it's so fantastic to see you. Thank you so much for being part of this interview and um, of this day and special occasion of the Game Dev Days um, event calendar. Um, I, I think you're pretty known, but still, would you mind introducing yourself and what do you do? What is what is your part in the Austrian game that scene? Oh, wow. I, I didn't know that I'm pretty known. Um, I have a loud voice, so uh, maybe that helps. Uh, yeah, my name is Gil Kopmeier. I am a, uh, let's say, uh, ex-actor, ex-choreographer, ex-performance artist that uh, turned to game development seven years ago um and i took a very particular route coming more from a, let's say like a artistic angle um with a strong focus on very particular niches um looking through like the game lens at uh, very uh, particular political games uh, mainly migration and in the process of doing so um i have uh made uh, numerous projects uh with uh, a company that i founded with causa creations and uh, my artistic peers at gold extra a collective based in salzburg um yeah and uh since a few years causa creations is now an official gmbh incorporated in vienna and i'm working together there since two years with the likes of christian knapp brian main and ben wahl on i would say like a smorgasbord of uh projects um yeah um that's me in a nutshell making games mostly politically cool um, can you tell us a little bit more about the history, how, how you started with everything and like the early stages also of the company? Um, so early, before even the company started, I made a Half-Life 2 deathmatch mod with Gold Extra. Um, and that basically became so successful and successful in 2008 was uh, you doing some random mod. Uh, in our case, it was about the militarization of European borders. Yes, uh, that was a thing in 2008 already. And uh, since it was played by um, hundreds of thousands of people, um, I was very motivated to dive uh, deeper into the medium. And a few years later, I had the opportunity to start uh, the company with uh, some colleagues um, in Austria and Germany. We did start a company actually in Germany uh, as um, business-wise. Uh, but very soon there was like an Austrian branch forming um, with people that I collaborated with. And that essentially, when the Germans slowly retired into the safe havens of classic IT and university, the Vienna branch basically took over. Um, that was in 2018. And yeah, as mentioned, since then we incorporated. And maybe just to not look at like the business business side of it and at like a just picking out a few projects that we have been doing. Um, so um, as I said, we took a, a strong look at migration um, in this uh, project with Gold Extra um, uh, called Frontiers, by the way, uh, around 2008. And we've been visiting this uh, theme migration in several other projects. Like we looked at it in a puzzle a game about electronic waste recycling called Burn the Boards that Cause of Creations did in 2015. And um, most importantly, um, it 
and that was probably like our most successful um, classical computer game project. Uh, we made uh, a game called Path Out with the Syrian designer Abdullah Karam, now known as uh, Jack Kutuman, by the way, who renamed himself. And uh, together with Jack, we made a, a game about his journey. And that became, it was like a, just a small um, part of that journey, actually, but that became uh, quite known through international media coverage. Recently, we've been stepping a little bit back from the classical, um, even, well, even not so classical, but like more typical computer games, maybe be political or not. And we also started to focus on mixed reality experiences. And that was due to a collaboration we did with the Viennese Volkstheater, who commissioned us to make a, a mixed reality game that looks at like a, in a very humoristic way at the dystopian future of Vienna. Uh, that was called Vienna All Tomorrows. And since last year, we've been working on a mixed reality framework to um, push these mixed reality um, um, experiences further, uh, but within the context of a framework to basically have like all the um, design and technical components ready. So this is a huge um, part of our work. Uh, also these days, uh, that we are like working in the background on this large construction that would help us making mixed reality experiences. Yeah, that's company uh, uh, past and present and a little bit of the future. <laughs> very, very exciting. Um, I mean, as you know, like um, I, I really love the game Path Out. It tells a very strong um, story and I think your studio takes a really interesting take. Um, on creating video games, very important ones. So thanks for doing that. Thank um, you. I would love, um, do you have more details on the current project? Um, this sounds super exciting. Um, I do actually. Uh, so this is a framework called PlayXR. Um, and uh, it's uh, funded by the AVS with like a, a prototyping funding. And uh, yeah, we, we're like in the first phases of like finishing the prototyping stage right now well like we're in the final phases of finishing the prototyping phase uh having an actual playable prototype so it it uses kind of a um a generic core gameplay that is based on uh events and decisions uh and interactions but i, I think the um the core feature is that it's device agnostic so uh it's it has mixed reality components it works with head-mounted displays. It works with handheld devices. It works also with like a fallback mode on uh, like a PCs. Um, and uh, most importantly, uh, it can work uh, on location and off location, always in a, in a in a network kind of way. So it's basically like a multiplayer and and like and device and location agnostic agnostic multiplayer XR framework. Complex. So yeah, that's that's it in a nutshell. I mean, it does something very specific. You know, it uh, it allows you to uh, do very very specific experiences, experiences that have events, events there where you can interact mostly through decisions. Um, but uh, underneath that, you know, we use basically like the latest uh, Unity technologies to create foundations to deploy that rather fast. Um, Bit of a gamble, obviously, um, believing that um, XR will become huge in the next years, uh, but uh, we think it's it's the right path to do. I I do so too. I'm, I'm, I mean, as you might know, I'm a huge supporter of everything related to XR. Mm. Speaking of the future, what yes. is the big vision um, for you, for your studio? What do you want to create? What is the big vision? And also what's coming in the next years? But the big, big, big vision first. The big, big vision um, is uh, that we want to become like a, I would say like, a, like a strong player in the realm of XR gaming with a strong focus, uh, if I may add, to education and culture. 
So um, this is very much to do with our own history and, and our partners. We've worked with museums and um, and cultural institutions a lot in the past. And um, I mean, I do understand that this, whatever we're doing could also be deployed in, let's say, uh, location-based entertainment uh, and of course, uh, enterprise and enterprise education. But our, our particular pedigree in our company is so much tied to cultural and artistic fields that we have channels of communication with these institutions. And looking at strong AR markets, um, we feel, uh, especially like the UK, we feel that this is a unique opportunity. So this is something where we want to really uh, participate when the wave uh, finally uh, surges. And uh, especially also like the uh, educational fields that are connected to that. And uh, this is um, talking about search. Um, the use case that we're also working on right now is connected to climate change. So we have a tiny itty bitty prototype right now uh, for in in house use. And but the steps to develop it further is a use case within the framework is uh, connected to a, a climate change based use case called the rising tide. That is the big big core vision of the company uh, right now. Um, but we are a little bit prone to uh, diversify sometimes as well. Um, that might be a bad habit, you know, because you have sideshows that also could pose distraction. Um, I think it's it really helped us uh, through the crisis. We had projects falling through, especially with cultural institutions, and our diversification helped us a lot to basically um, um, glide through 2020s mostly unharmed um so we keep up these uh, sideshows i mean it's one aspect of it is um from a business development point of view it's good to have like a diversified strategies if you can still stay focused and the other one is um it's it helps me as a designer um to stay sane if i don't have to work on one thing Mm -hmm. all the time so and i think the one of these side shows that is currently coming to blossom it's a very very unexpected ones but we are working on a tarot based board game so oh. this is <laughs> highly unusual for a company that normally focuses on XR. but uh, yeah it's a very promising it's a side project that we started uh, like two years ago and this year we just wanted to have like a small thing and then it became hugely popular when we started to post uh, first glimpses of it. And this is something we'll bring out into the public. So who knows? Maybe we are a game company quite soon uh, that is um, basically carried by the revenue through tarot cards. And it would be probably like, a, like one of the most unusual business construction in the industry. Looking forward to that. Um... I mean, um, you're coming from a very interesting background, um, as, as as you mentioned, and I, I think it's quite interesting, like your path into the games industry. Is there anything you've learned, um, or let's let's keep it more general? What advices would you give young developers or people trying to approach um, and get into the game industry? Um, join the community. Um, I keep on saying that to uh, my students at FH St. Pölten and FH Wien. Um, come to the meetings, uh, join the Discord, uh, join the Slack, uh, whatever it is. Um, if you need help, just ask for it. People are incredibly helpful. Um, the one thing I really enjoyed from leading the arts and joining the games industry is that um, I have the feeling that the game, especially like the games industry, is um, maybe not so much tech in general, but really games, is that it's a very, very generous field. Um, People aren't too keen on, you know, being boasting and, and, and shining, but they're very keen on having a good time with each other and, and socializing. Mm. And in, I think in Austria, it's particularly true that there are so many like incredibly talented and at the same time, humble individuals. And uh, I've seen this at meetings, you know, like there's like kids coming from like tech high schools they're 15 and they come and they immediately you can't just talk to like the guy who did it for 25 years he won't mind they won't mind 
you can approach anyone if you need help uh, you can just say it that's one big advice because i think if you feel at home in the community um it's much easier to do what you're doing because i mean the main work still sitting in front of the fucking machine have to kind of make that work and if if there is no um social incentive that is a little bit also away from the screen connected to that you know it can be it can be much harder to stay um balanced and focused over the long years it takes to make this work this is so true thanks so much i think that's super important to point out i got one last question which is either the most challenging um or maybe an easy one <laughs> but um 2020 was a weird year a challenging year for many of us how did you cope and um, your studio cope with this year um, is there anything you learned um, for the next year and is there anything you you're gonna do differently or maybe looking forward to it for for the next year so when when it's getting a little bit more normal again i mean, i will totally look forward to getting that vaccination i can tell you <laughs> i think everyone in the we are everyone in the studios i mean um you know like 2020 hasn't been totally devastating for us, but we did lose some work, but then we were lucky and gained some other. So um, that was, we came out of that unharmed, but um, we are very strict for many, many reasons. Um, also because some of us are in high risk groups when it comes to remote office. And uh, I did participate in, um, in like full on productions uh, in a remote capacity. But we as a team, especially as a core team, we really prefer to be together in a room. Mm -hmm. And I do look forward to just be in a studio and work with people, you know, and, you know, like have all this human contact in the work that I think actually makes the work, work much better. Otherwise, you're like caught up in these technical procedures and like, oh, I... I have a question, I'm going to file a report and I'm, um, there's a procedure for that and there's a procedure for this. So the, the whole bandwidth of interaction uh, will become much broader, I hope, once we all get that darn vaccination into our veins. And then we can actually be together and, be, and uh, become hopefully much more efficient again in working with each other. And I really, for me, I'm not doing this uh, alone. Like this was... It was always like uh, what I quite enjoyed in game development. It's always like a group effort. It's always like a team process. And I look forward to actually experience that in its full capacity again quite soon. Thank you so much for all your honest and inspiring answers. And yeah, good Thank luck. You. I'm looking forward to your future projects. And this sounds super exciting. And hopefully see you very soon in real life. Again. Yes, <laughs> in real life. That'd be fantastic. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye.